So do you suffer from a duck hook with your driver? Is that totally ruining your game of golf? It's a question that uh, I do get asked and one of, one of the people that commented on, my, uh, on one of my videos, Oliver McKinley has actually asked that question. Oliver says, I try to keep it as simple as possible myself. Could you make a video on how not to pull duck hook a driver, especially after you've gotten good and loose during a round? I keep having this problem and it's driving me crazy. Thanks, Fitzy. Well, Oliver, thank you for the question. It's a really good question and I know you've got a lot of friends out there that suffer from the same thing. So, I'm going to preface this by saying I have never seen you swing a golf club and it is really difficult for me to fix something that I can't see. So there are a number of reasons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the most logical reasons and the things that I think are the most common for causing that duck hook. So the very first thing I would be checking would be the grip. And I would suspect that either one, your left hand is too strong on the club, meaning it's over too far so you may be able to see three or even four knuckles on your left hand it could also be that your right hand is also in a strong position now you might have both strong left and right hand or it could be just the left hand that's strong or it could be just the right hand that's strong so that would be the first thing that i would look at because the reason people duck hook is at the point of contact the club face is very closed so we have to start okay the club face is closed at impact the first thing I always check is the grip because there's no point changing golf swings when a grip is bad so what should the grip do well the grip needs to be neutral we want our thumb to be straight down the shaft and as I look down there I can only see two knuckles on my left hand when I take my grip I want to see my club resting in the middle joints of my right hand. A lot of people sneak it into the calluses there of my right hand, which makes the right hand turn under. And if you release the club properly, it's going to come back and have a closed club face at impact. So as I said, that's the first area I would fix. So just check it yourself. Even if your grip feels good, just try and neutralize the grip a little bit and see if that helps. So if you've changed your grip and you've got a neutral grip and you're still hitting it with a duck hook, that would get to my next thing that I would see. So the next cause I would check is shoulder alignment at address. A lot of people start with their shoulders pointing left. It's a very, very common mistake. So. I would either get a friend to have a look at behind you, take a video from behind when you take your setup, or look in the mirror. If we had a mirror here, you could actually take your setup and check with your mirror, but we don't want to see your shoulders aiming too far left to start with. So if you do aim too far left with your shoulders and you have a correct release, the ball is going to start left of the target and it's going to go further left. So that would be the next thing. Now it may be that your grip is good, it may be that your shoulder alignment is good. So the third thing that I would be looking at is your sequence. And the sequence from the end of the swing should be hips first, shoulders second, hands third. It's known as the kinematic sequence. It's how we throw. So if we get back here and we're going to throw a ball, it's hip, shoulder, hands. So it's the chain of movement or the order of movement. If we serve in tennis, we throw the ball up, we get back here, it is hip, shoulder, hands. So it's the same order for a lot of different sports. Now, if you're suffering from a duck hook and we know it's not your grip or your shoulder alignment, it would then have to be that your sequence is wrong. So what would be tending to happen is you're getting up here and your first movement down is your shoulders, followed by your hips, followed by your hands. So by, by the time you do that, it's gonna produce a shot that starts left and goes further left. So I'll see if I can do that for you now. 
this will be the duck hook and it's just from a poor sequence there it is there it didn't really get high off the ground it, the ball sort of nose dived but it's gone a long way left so that's that order so if your sequence was wrong a couple of things we could do firstly is you would start by thinking okay my first move down is going to be my hip sliding to the left and turning to the left then my shoulders and then my hands so you could have some practice swings doing it i've got a drill that i work on with people and that is to take put the club behind the ball about oh that's about a foot or 30 centimeters feet together take the club back stop step and hit so I'll actually do that one now I call it the stepping drill you could call it the half happy Gilmore or a happy Gilmore type type drill but it's just there back step and hit it difficult to coordinate you won't necessarily hit it straight but it does help promote the correct order of movement so if I get up here my first move is my foot then my shoulders and then my hands and it's unlikely I'm going to hit it with a big pull hook so they're the most common reasons Oliver I'd love for you to get back to me when you've tried these and let me know anyone else out there if you're suffering from a duck hook try these things and if we can work through it logically we should be able to fix it